Um, <laughs> take one. Take one. Alright. Now we start with the circle and we move on to the other circle. Okay. <laughs> now. And if I see any squares, we shall go in the hot house for three days. Okay. The window would be pulled out. <laughs> I've been asked a very intelligent question. How would you handle and simplify Jiminy Cricket's little ball head since it's already a ball? And that is a very good question. Yes. Now, this pose right here I was just saying was uh, pretty much an oval when it's all stretched out. It would look something like this. All you need is just enough information on here to find out where to plant the eyes, like that. So I've got an oval, and I've drawn the surface line so I can make sure that these eyes are solidly placed on there, and the nose, just a little indication like that for the nose. Then I just put a little circle there for the mouth and throw in the pupils for eye direction. And if I wanted to, I could add the eyebrows, like concentric circles over the eye like that. And that's it. That's how I would animate it. And then I, and there's not much more detail after that. I mean, there's just these lines here, and then I put in the cheeks and stuff. But for that pose, it's pretty much just an oval. Now this one here, where it's straight on, what I'm saying was for the skull, I would make a, a ball there, and I'd hit the center line, put the eye line in there, and I would throw these eyes in there. My direction, the nose right in the center. Mouth here. Now instead of drawing another circle or an oval like this, instead of doing that, what that tends to do is it makes it, I know it's going to sound weird, but it makes the expression of the head look stiff, like it's, it's too segmented. So what I try to do is I try to flare right off of the skull, I try to make a fleshy mass that's like, if you, you know, pretend it's made out of like clay or something. And I just do that, make a little like mass there. And that describes that whole other area. Right in here, all that cheeky mass. Cheeky! <laughs> and there's the eyebrow. But really, this is how simple I would go when I animate the thing. I wouldn't get any more detail than that. I might put this little oval in here for his, uh, to delineate his mouth area from his cheeks, which is kind of nice. That actually was not that bad. So now when I put another sheet of paper over this to tie it down, or if I use a darker, darker pencil, if I've used a colored pencil, I can just... Yeah, it's disappeared. this as a basic structure to go right over it and tie down all those shapes like this. Oops. I can put some planes in there like that if I need to. If there's a definite shape to this nose, I'll do that. And I would, instead of just making this an oval again, I would start to put a little shape in there for the, for the cheek like this. And I really try to keep everything as asymmetrical as possible. That's a real big key to facial expressions. If you start to make thing, everything really symmetrical, it really kind of kills it. And it's not as interesting to look at. So I'd beef up this cheek a little more and tone this one down. Maybe make this a little bit bigger, this a little smaller. Try to vary the height of the eyebrows, one's a little higher than the other. Little things like that that you can beef up when you go over it from that. It's just a generic construction that you animate. And then there's the finished, more finished drawing. Yeah. And start with all this other stuff in there, whatever. So now I wanted to show you another thing to keep in mind is just how flexible you can be with all this. Which is pretty flexible. I went ahead and did this this set of drawings last uh, last class. And let's say this is one expression here, and you want it to go into this expression. Instead of just in between a straight going from there to there, which would be pretty dull, what we're going to do in this assignment is we're going to we're just going to pick any two expressions on here that you want to animate into, and you'll do this 
it won't just do it straight, but you'll try to make it go through some sort of, you know, there's overlapping movements and things. There's a, an anticipation there for one thing, and there's the, the movement, and then it goes past the, the past final pose, it overshoots a little bit and then settles down into the final expression. So you can see how much you can, how pliable this whole face mask is. You can really squash the nose and the cheeks and the eyes and everything. And the whole shape of the head, and as it starts to go up, it really stretches up. And it goes like that. Now the, this is pretty symmetrical here. I would definitely, you know, get this as asymmetrical as possible. This is just really quickly done just to show how you can move these shapes around. And it settles down into that. So you could take this one here where he's shy. I wouldn't worry too much about what the labeling is of these and whether they would work together or not, but you can go from shy to mad and have him go to a big anticipation like this and shoot past it and then settle down into this and have the little ears flop and stuff, but keeping it simple like we do with that Jiminy Cricket head. In fact, let me do a quick demo of this guy. I would simplify him as well. Okay, for this one here, the shy, the shy pose expression, just make that cranium. Okay. Get those crosshairs going to delineate the, the tilt, the angle of the head. He's kind of tilted down a little bit because he's a little kind of sad or shy here. Then flare off of that to make this big cheek shape. And I imagine that this body is connected up in here into the head like that. There's a neck in there somewhere. That's another thing to keep track of. So there's the basic shape for that. And then for the eyes, I would just make a couple of circles and throw in the closed eyelids. This guy might be a little bit tougher because of this muzzle shape. That's always a little <coughs> tricky, but I just treat it as one big mass up here, almost like a, a can or a cylinder like that. It's stuck on, and then I just put the nose right in there. And you don't have to worry about this little dip down. I would just shade it in like this for the roughs. If you want to make it a little triangle. But that's it. That's how I'd animate them. Real simple. I wouldn't worry about all those little overlapping things or the little hairs and stuff. I'd probably throw that cheek in there. I wouldn't even worry about the ears right at this point. i just try to get from one expression to another. And then you can empty emphasize and add to the expression later on by adding the ears. Try an even more simplified version here. Because this might be too complicated. There, this is good. That's all you really need to worry about is that for this one. Real simple. And let's say I'm going to draw him again, but over in this pose. Do that. Get that muzzle. There's the nose. The eyes. That's it. It's much easier to animate, to animate this basic formula into this rather than trying to get all this stuff. So, so go ahead and do that. Try to pick a couple of uh, different expo expressions. There's plenty of them in here. And if you find that you go from one to another and it's effortless, just keep going and try to do some more and try to work. be clever in how you work in and out of these things with anticipations and overshoots and things like that. And we'll come around and help you. And, you know, if you need, to, if you're putting too much detail in, we'll help you out with that. And if you want to use the expressions on one character, but you're drawing a different one. Yeah, if you want to put this knocked out expression on that one, feel free. Right. Mix right. and match. Vice versa.